But first, let me begin by clarifying the purpose of nonviolent communication. Its purpose is to help you to do what you already know how to do. Now, why do we need to learn something today that you already know how to do? Because sometimes we forget to do this. We forget because we've been educated to forget. Now, what is it that I'm talking about that we already know how to do? The purpose of this process is to help us to connect in a way that makes natural giving possible. Natural giving possible. What do I mean by natural giving? Uh, let me do you a song to make it clear uh, what I mean by natural giving. I never feel more given to than when you take from me When you understand the joy I feel caring for you And you know my giving isn't done to put you in my debt But because I want to live the love I feel for you To receive with grace May be the greatest giving There's no way that I can separate the two When you give to me I give you my receiving And when you take from me I feel so given to You all know that giving. You know how to do it. And that's what I'm interested in. I'm remembering to stay with that quality of giving, moment by moment, in any connection. But we also all know that it's easy to lose it. It's easy to lose that connection, so that instead of enjoying that quality of giving, which is possible every moment in every contact we have, in spite of how precious that is, we forget. And instead of playing the game that that song is about, which I call Making Life Wonderful, that's, that's the most fun game I've ever heard, instead, much of the time, we play another game called Who's Right? Have you ever played that game? <laughs> See. It's a game where everybody loses, so isn't this amazing that we all know about this quality of giving that the song was about. It's possible every moment. We, val we, we find that the richest thing to do, and much of our life we end up playing Who's Right? Now, the game of who's right involves two of the most devious things human beings have ever come upon. One, punishment. See, because if you're wrong in the game of who's right, then you deserve to suffer. Can you imagine a more diabolical concept to educate people? So, uh, if you haven't already abstained from punishment, I'm sure by the end of the day that will no longer be a part of your consciousness. No more punishment. You won't do it in your families. We'll get rid of it with criminals. It just makes things more violent. We'll find other ways to deal with other nations beside punishment. No more punishment. No more reward. It's the same game. It's part of the game of who's right. If you're right, then you get rewarded. If you're wrong, you get punished. No more. No more. It's created enough violence on the planet. No more guilt induction, see. No more shame. No more concepts of duty and obligation. Just what the song is about, natural giving. So how did we get off target? We got off target, according to Walter Wink, 
theologian who writes in his book, The Powers That Be, we got off target about 5,000 years ago. We, we lost, we got off target because we started to get some wild thinking. Wild thinking that human beings are innately evil. And when you believe that, that human beings are innately evil, then if things aren't going as we would like, what's the corrective process? The corrective process is penitence, you see. When people are evil, you think that the way to bring about change when people are behaving in a way you don't like is to make people hate themselves for what they're doing. So for these political reasons and theological reasons, we started to develop a language that I call jackal language. It's a language that cuts us off from life. And, uh, makes it very easy to, do, to be violent, very easy to be violent. In fact, in that book I mentioned, Wink says that domination cultures, one of the things you have to educate people is to make violence enjoyable. See. And we've done a good job of that. We make violence enjoyable in our culture. For the two hours a night from seven to nine when children are watching television the most, in 75% of the programs they watch, the hero either kills somebody or beats them up, you see? So we, and when does this happen at the climax of the program? We, we've been educated for quite a while to make violence enjoyable. So even though I think what that song was about is what is really closer to our nature, this natural giving, we've been educated to make violence enjoyable and educated in a way we can even be violent to our children. So what is jackal language like? See, jackal language, as I've mentioned, is a language of moralistic judgments. You think in terms of who's right, who's wrong, who's good, who's bad. And when you mention change, yes, we want change at times, so how do you get change in the jackal system? Watch a parent try to bring about change in the child. This is a parent teaching a young child, say one of the most important words in jackal. Say you're sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you're not really sorry. I can see it. You're not really sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I forgive you. <laughs> can you imagine a game like that? Can you imagine a parent responding to a child that way? And if a parent is going to do that to a child in their own family, what are they going to do to people from other cultures who behave in a way they don't appreciate? So of course you're going to have violence wherever you have this kind of thinking. In cultures that do not have this thinking, you don't see violence, you see. So that's how we got off target. Even though we could be playing the game make life wonderful each moment, we have been educated for quite a while to play another game, who's right. So what are the parts of this game of who's right? I've, all, I've just mentioned one of them. One part is moralistic judgments, learning how to go up to our head